Kappa. If you've been on YouTube lately, everyone's talking about it. So it's the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It uh, was put in place in the United States in the late 90s, and the idea is to protect kids from having their data collected. Mainly it was for personally identifiable data, like their names, addresses, email addresses, you know, where to find them. And that includes usernames, stuff like that. Now, before I go too much further, I need to make a disclaimer because this is kind of a legal issue. I am not a lawyer. So this is just my own thoughts and opinions on the research that I've done myself looking into this because it could have possibly affected me as a content creator. I suppose it still could. So uh, basically what's going on here is that uh, YouTube collects data on all of their viewers. So we as content creators create content and YouTube allows us to post it on their website and it's, it's kind of a service they provide for us. They allow us to do this and they pay for all the server space and all the other stuff that goes along with that. And what they get out of it is that they run advertising on our content and they make money off of that. And if you are a good enough content creator, then you get a kickback with an AdSense account. You can also make some money off the advertising. So that's, that's pretty much the way the system works. Now, YouTube is tracking the data not only on the people who are logged in, but also on the people who aren't logged in. And this is done to make sure that they're seeing things that might interest them. So in order to have a YouTube account, you have to be 13 years old or older. Now, the reason for that is that the COPPA law protects kids 12 and under. So the way YouTube is set up, supposedly all of the, the users who are logged in should be 13 and up. So you would think that, you know, they're in the clear, but that's not quite the case because you don't have to be logged in or have an account to view YouTube videos. So in order for the COPPA law to apply, the, the FTC has to show two things. They have to show, one, that the intended audience is kids. So content has to be directed at kids. And two, the uh, tracking, you know, data tracking of some kind has to be happening. Because it's just fine to to direct content at kids. What's not fine is tracking their data. So that's pretty much what the law is about. Now, where YouTube comes in is it matters whether YouTube is aware that the data they're tracking belongs to kids. So if they, if they weren't aware, then it doesn't really apply to them. So what happened is that the FTC was able to prove that YouTube was aware that they had a large audience of kids watching their videos. Now, we sort of assume that these kids are watching not logged in because they're under 13. So they shouldn't be uh, people with accounts. Now, of course, they could lie and they could, they could get an account but that's, that's kind of another topic where YouTube has covered itself in, in that regard. Like, you know, if, if the kid lies, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, similarly, uh, someone could be watching, uh, a kid could be watching a channel from their parents' account. In that case, they, they sort of have their parents' permission. That's not good enough. It has to be a written, verifiable permission. So you know, written email, something like that, um, in order to avoid the, the Kaaba law. So basically the FTC caught YouTube tracking data for kids and YouTube knew about it. So that resulted in a 
a big case, and it was ended with a settlement. It wasn't actually a fine. So in order for it to have been a fine, the FTC would have had to prove that the content creators were intentionally directing their content at kids. They would have had to you know, select which ones were doing that, and then those content creators probably would have gotten fines along with YouTube. But uh, YouTube settled this, and they paid the, the big settlement fee, and as part of that settlement, the content creators now have to say whether their content is intended for kids 12 and under or not. And that's caused a big stir with all the content creators because they're concerned about what this could mean for their channel. So the reason they're concerned is that if you mark your content as for kids, then YouTube has to shut off all tracking. And that really, really hurts the ad revenue. Uh, people are reporting something like maybe 90% drop in revenue, which is a big drop. But this more than it's more than just the money that's an issue. It's also things like turning off comments. And that's because, you know, usernames and comments is trackable data. It also shuts off um, a variety of other things like uh, the ability to put your videos in playlists or some people are saying the ability for people to even find your videos that like you won't be recommended to people because of this data tracking loss so it can hit content creators pretty hard even if they're not monetized it, it also would prevent you from being monetized in the future if you were making kids content now that's monetized as far as targeted advertising goes. Now, a context-based advertising should still be allowed, but YouTube isn't currently set up for that. So maybe at some point in the future, all of the, the kids' content could have kids' ads. Not targeted, just generally focused at kids. So, you know, that's something maybe YouTube could set up in the future, but it's not set up right now. And, uh, Maybe it won't be, who knows? That's up to YouTube. But for now, we have to deal with the first step is identifying which content is for kids and which content isn't intended specifically for kids. And so I think I'm gonna pull up a video, or not a video, a picture next. And that's gonna be my analytics for my channel. Here we go. I don't think there's anything on here that, that you guys shouldn't see. It's just uh, just a chart here. So this shows that on my channel, um, half of my audience is 25 to 34 years, and most of the other half is 35 to 44 years. A small amount is 18 to 24, and an even smaller amount is 45 to 54. So that's um, more or less centered around my own age. I, I obviously, my content appeals to people of a similar age to me. Um, just, that's just what I talk about here. Now, you notice there's not a section on this chart for people below 13 years of age. That's not tracked. And also, as I mentioned, there's no way to know whether, um, any of these, uh, 35 year olds are perhaps giving their phone to their kids and having them watch my channel. Like, I don't think that's very likely because I don't think my content would interest them, but this doesn't really track that is, is the point. And that's why we have uh, this next image, which says YouTube analytics is not designed to help determine if your content is child directed. You should use the factors outlined by the FTC to set your audience. So that's, that's pretty much what that says. The, the analytics isn't sufficient proof that your content isn't intended for kids. Uh, that's because you could possibly be making kids content and not be having kids watch it. Like, just because you're unsuccessful doesn't mean you're not targeting kids. So, you know, that's, 
That's kind of the way that works. It's it's probably accurate. Like I think the analytics is pretty accurate, but it's not legally binding accurate. Um, what else? Uh, so this this channel is mainly about uh, Magic the Gathering, at least right now. And later on, it's going to be about some muscle cars and things like that. So that's even less kid oriented. But we'll take uh, Magic for example. Magic right here. It says age 13 and up. Magic the Gathering. This is a newer box. Now the older boxes, of course, are people that are older and more interested in them because they were around back when those sets were new. So this is sort of a nostalgia channel uh, and just a general information channel. You know, sometimes new players want to know this stuff too, but still, you know, 13 and up. Now, does that mean that I'm safe? No, not necessarily. So just because that magic is intended for 13 years and up doesn't mean that I can't make content that's directed for younger kids if I wanted to. That's not what I'm doing, but someone could be doing that. So I can't say that all magic channels are safe. That's not the case. Um, let's say you wanted to make a, a video series that was focused on teaching kids 12 and under how to play magic. Well, that's, that's very obviously directed at ch children, uh, children, kids. So uh, that would be a no-no if you're tracking data. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Like maybe if, uh, if Wizards of the Coast made an animated series that was targeted at, at younger kids, then that could be kids content that's, that's magic themed. And they might do something like that in an effort to get kids interested in buying the product once they do reach this older age. So, you know, there's some examples of things that could happen, but, but I think most magic content is going to be focused at people 13 and up. And so we shouldn't have to worry too much, but you still have to be careful. Now, there, uh, there are a lot of YouTube channels that are still going to be affected by this. If, if they're doing anything with, with a toy that indicates on its package that it's for younger kids, you know, 12 and under, that's dangerous. It's, it's not guaranteed to be kids content, but it's higher risk. Um, especially if they have you know, kids on their channel opening the boxes or something like that, or if they have, you know, songs or animated characters, things that, that kids gravitate towards. So you can be kids content. You just can't track data. So the FTC has to prove those two things in order to find you. Now, now COPPA is a, a national law here in the US. So it applies everywhere. This isn't just a YouTube thing. Now, any idea of leaving YouTube for another platform, like that doesn't help. COPPA is still a law if you're in the US. Now, if you're not in the US and you're on YouTube, then COPPA can still affect you because YouTube is based in the US and you're putting your videos on YouTube. And also because if you get fined for breaking this law, now you may not be able to be fined if you're in another country, but YouTube can be fined for collecting the data. They're assisting you in this, in this effort to collect the data. So if YouTube gets fined because of your content, then they can shut down your channel and delete it. And so even if you're international, this affects you. Let me think what's next here. Okay, so here's some guidelines on what uh, how FTC determines whether content is child-directed or not. Um, I'll just I'll just leave those up there for you to read. Feel free to pause the video. I'm not going to read them all to you. You can read on your own. Okay, now what if my content is applicable to a wide audience, but not kids specifically? Now that's very important because 
just having a kid in your video isn't sufficient to be labeled as kids content legally. So there are a variety of things that you could do that uh, maybe might interest a kid that doesn't make you kids content. You can be a mixed audience or a wide audience. Like you can have adult directed content that is kids safe. Like, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of cuss words or X-rated themes, but even though it's kids safe, that doesn't mean it's directed at kids. So if you have a, a mixed audience or a wide audience like this, then COPPA really isn't something that you should be worried about. Okay, so YouTube has given us these two options for how to label our videos, and we're, we're required to label them. So the options are for kids, and that pretty much gets you demonetized, I mean, more or less, and it's pretty harmful for your channel as far as getting views, um, no comments, stuff like that. It's, it's pretty rough. For kids, that's, uh, that's a rough, rough way to go but it shuts off tracking. And the other way to go is not for kids. Now, I don't think that means only adult content. I think that means anything that's not directed at kids. So it, it should include the wider audience, mixed audience category. It's not for kids. It's, you know, for everyone or for adults, whatever. Now, you can be fined regardless of which one of those things you choose. Now, a lot of people seem to be misunderstanding that. They're, they think that if they choose four kids, they can't be fined. That's, that's not the case. So let's say you choose not for kids. That's the category most people are talking about right now. So you choose not for kids. That means that YouTube is tracking your viewers. And the FTC has proven that YouTube is aware that it is tracking kids. That's what this whole settlement's about. So they have that half already sorted out. All they have to do is show that you're making kids content and they can find you. Because at that point, you're, you're meeting both of the qualifications that says you're breaking the law. Now, look at it from the other side here. So let's Let's say you have chosen that you're making for kids content. All right, that shuts off YouTube tracking. But you've admitted that you're making kids content to the FTC. And they can use that if you track data via any method, not just on YouTube, because this law applies to the whole nation. So if you're getting data from, say, Facebook or I don't know, Twitch or your Instagram, who knows? So that's pretty rough. Um, so if you are making content and you have labeled yourself as for kids and you're getting comments with, with usernames, um, that's, that's pretty bad for you. You can be fined technically, right? So it's dangerous either way you go. Now, the point of this is that neither of those solutions for kids or not for kids fixes the problem. What fixes the problem is not breaking the law. And the law says don't track kids if you're making kids content. That, that's pretty much it. So you need to be honest when you're labeling your channel. If you are making for kids content, then you need to label your channel as for kids. And if you're not making for kids content, you probably shouldn't label your content as for kids because if it's not for kids, that probably puts you at greater risk. Um, now, part of the reason for that is that 
if you have self-labeled yourself as being for kids, directed at kids, then because they're not allowed to track data on which part of your audience is kids or not kids, they have to assume that all of your audience is kids. So if you're making uh, mixed audience videos and you, you say that they're for kids, then now all of a sudden the FTC has to assume that all of your viewers are kids. And if they catch you tracking data anywhere, postcards, whatever, then they can fine you. Now, will they fine you? That's a whole other question. They're, let's say they're focused on getting the most for their money. Um, it costs a lot of money to run an investigation and you know they're probably not going to catch the small people. They're going to go after the big fish. And that's one of the reasons they went after YouTube. So YouTube has a lot of data available and uh, that's probably, I guess, an easy hunting ground for them to catch people. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they went after some other big uh, service providers. Uh, for example, what about Disney Plus? Like Disney Plus is like, there's going to be a lot of kids on there, right? So, boy, I hope they've got their ducks in a row. Um, what else? Let's see if I have another picture here. Ah, here we go. Yeah. So if you're, if you're not for kids content, then you should be pretty all right. Because if you're, if you're honestly not for kids, if you're not making content that's directed to kids, then the law doesn't apply to you. Now, saying that you're not making content for kids doesn't actually protect you. You have to actually not be making content for kids. Like just because you, you can't just say that you're not making kids content and then make a children's animated show. Like that, that doesn't, you're not protected in that case. On the other hand, if you're not making kids content, then coming right out and saying that you're not making kids content does give you a little extra protection. It's not, not full protection, it's not foolproof, but it's something. It says, hey, I'm not making stuff for kids. So if at some point the FTC isn't sure whether or not you're making stuff for kids, like let's say it's a borderline kind of a thing, then you've done something at least to influence stuff in your favor. Um, on that same uh, line of thought, if you're really not sure what to do here, and you don't think that you're for kids content, but you're, you're worried about being fined anyway, something you might want to consider is the age restriction uh, setting on YouTube. So here's the here's the picture for that. So here we go. Uh, you can see here it says uh, audience, yes it's made for kids or no it's not made for kids. And below that here we have the age restriction setting. Now this is in the YouTube Creator Studio and the videos section where you edit your video info. So uh, age restriction you can restrict your video to an adult audience. So uh, you can choose, yes, restrict my video to viewers over 18. Now this makes the videos uh, not be monetized. So, you know, it's still not good for your channel. It comes with most of the same penalties as choosing four kids, except that it doesn't put you at the same risk as having admitted you're making kids content. Because if you've admitted that you're making kids content, then you're subject to the COPPA law and you need to you know, abide by that or get fined. So this is going the opposite direction. This is saying that you're not making co kids content and you're so sure that you're not making it that your, your videos are actually directed not even to people of 13 and up, but only to people of 18 and up. So you've 
taken steps to keep your video content away from kids, as opposed to just putting it out there for anyone to watch. So again, that's another kind of a defense tactic. So uh, what this does is it makes it so the your videos are not visible to users who are logged out. So only people with YouTube accounts can view your videos. And those people should be, according to the YouTube Terms of Service, 13 and up. However, in order to view your videos that are age restricted, they actually have to be logged in and 18 and up. Um, additionally, restricted mode has to be turned off. Uh, if you're not familiar with restricted mode, it's kind of like a parental control. So uh, someone could turn restricted mode on and then, you know, let their kid use the computer or whatever, and then the kid wouldn't be able to view the 18 and up content. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the fines that they've been throwing out for numbers are like $42,000 or something like that. Keep in mind that's a maximum fine. Um, it's not going to be that full amount every time. Probably very rarely would it ever be the maximum amount. Uh, data that I've seen says that uh, previous fines were something like two and a half dollars per kid affected. Now, if you're marked as four kids and they're assuming that all of your viewers are four or all of your viewers are kids, that could add up to a lot still. But you know, keep that in mind. They they consider your own income and you know whether it would put you out of business or not when they're calculating this this fine amount. So. Uh, how would they how would they even prove that your viewers were under 13 years old I'm not sure it, it won't be on the analytics data so I guess YouTube would have to tell them somehow I don't know YouTube must know because YouTube announced that they knew in their marketing so hmm I think that's about it for this video um, like be careful out there I'm gonna stick around on YouTube with my channel because I am pretty confident that my content is not directed towards children um, everyone has to make their own judgment call on that catch you later